what's this? It's the robot dude, and I think that's Terezi. Yeah, the 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 freaking dragon doll things. Volume seven, route one. Begin the friendship process. Oh, it has long begun already. It's a clear, cool night, and you're wandering around trying to decide whose hive you should crash at before the sun comes up. It's nice having so many options for places to stay. You've cultivated a decent community for yourself, and there is an ember of pride in your belly about it. Still, you find yourself feeling a little aimless. The last couple friends you made were pretty intense. That's not necessarily a bad thing, but you're vibing at a chiller frequency right now. There's still a while until it gets dangerously light out, so you sort of pop around, seeing what feels right. It's kind of fun to test out the boundaries of your powers. You've used it to find friends, but you're really not sure how far it goes. You think, tree, and you don't know how your magic brain decided which one to choose, but fuck if you aren't sitting on an extremely high branch a second later. You try it again, with whatever concept comes to mind. You try it again, with whatever concept comes to mind. Garden? Was there a blank in the previous one? <laughs> okay, weird. You try it again, with whatever concept comes to mind. Garden. Cave. Garden, cave, mall. And it all works. Oh, you're remembering stuff. These are from the previous friend sims. You don't remember ever having been to any of those specific places, but you feel a strange, prickly affinity for them each time your feet touch the ground. Those are all pretty generic locational nouns, though. You wonder if it works for things that are more abstract. Quickly, before you can talk yourself out of the naivety of it, you think, home. Where is home though? I don't know where I'm from. It still takes you a minute to open your eyes, even after you feel your guts all back in the right place. Because what if you wake up in a room that feels like yours? Or worse and infinitely more likely, what if you don't? You breathe in deep and immediately cough wretchedly. Um, this is somebody's place, but it's not my home. You open your watery eyes clinging to the hope that maybe you come from a land of dusty comforts where you always just breathe in layers of dust and it's fine. It's not fine. You've landed inside of one of the spindliest, most precarious hunks of metal that has ever been bolted into the side of a cliff. It looks like some ancient outpost, not homey at all. Of course that wouldn't work. It was stupid to try. Defeat is bitter in your mouth. There's a twisty part of you that wants to curl up on a particular piece of floor and take a nap. You can't work out how much of that urge is just you wanting to give in. So just in case, you don't surrender to it. Maybe you'll come back another time and sift through all the shit on the shelves. But for now, you're not sure how structurally sound this thing is and you can't take any more disappointment. So you try one more time to pop up somewhere you haven't been before. What was that one guy's name that Gamzee mentioned? Before we leave, isn't this the house of the troll that's always tired and drinking a lot of coffee? Or am I remembering wrong? I don't know. Oh yeah, Equius. Maybe he's chill. You think his name and zap away, imagining yourself leaving an edgy, despondent swirl of dust in your wake. Okay, hey, hey, working out? <laughs> your magical zap calibration maybe isn't as off as you thought because you pop in on Equius as close as it is possible to get to the dude without landing directly on top of him and then you promptly get punched. The astonishing unchillness of the situation is imminently apparent. He, he's mid-jump, mid-yow, mid-sweat, and mid-swing of an outlandishly beefy arm down toward you. You freeze frame like an anime protagonist analyzing their choices mid-battle. In your drawn out split second of an observational window, you realize he's not aiming at you but in the direction of whatever noisy worrying thing you happen to plop down in front of. Uh... Fuck? As soon as he sees you, his eyebrows shoot up above his busted ass sunglasses, and his yell strangles itself into panic. His arm shudders as though he's trying, and failing, to alter its glorious face work trajectory. You really do not want to get your face punched off your head, so you scream and zap just outside the high arched door on the far end of the room. I think he was trying to punch his robots or something. You hear a deep, meaty thunk, followed by a groan, then a sharp, metallic crunch. The worry stops. Oh my god, is he dead? Is the other thing dead? Should you go check on him? 
You skitter away from the door and then back to it, unsure what to do. Was that... Wait, was that always your name? Or did you change it? Centaur's testicle? Is that actually his name? I don't remember, but that seems fake. But also, it could be real, I don't know. No, it can't have been. Hello? Show yourself this instant. Ah, oh, fuck. He does not sound happy. His words are a little garbled, too. Oops, I scroll back. Like some teeth just got knocked out by whoever's ass he was just kicking. You weigh your options. Oh, and weigh them do I weigh. Um, chicken out or be brave. Um, what happens if I chicken out while I zap elsewhere? You don't know. Equius looks super strong and even more pissed. You really, really do not want to be next in line to get disemboweled? If friendship with this guy is really meant to be, maybe you can reconnect with Gamzee as an intermediary. That sounds like a normal and cool time. Patty grips you as his heavy footsteps approach the door. Forgetting you have super useful zap power specifically for use in time sensitive panic situations, you turn and run. You glance over your shoulder as you go and collide spectacularly with a brick wall. Reader, you're so dumb. Oh god. It's the butler. Looking up from the brightly polished floor where you lay, in inexplicably doused in milk and broken glass, you realize it wasn't a wall. You hit. It's a glistening part pseudo humanoid, part horse, cow. Be bees? Person? Another godforsaken loses, maybe? You really aren't sure. But the fact that his top half looks kind of like a more dapper you- Oh god, that's what you look like? Very troubling. <laughs> more dapper you fills you with, more the with the most cursed mixture of fear and curiosity you've felt thus far. He doesn't seem bothered by you at all, only anxiously trying to get by you. Yeah, you're in its way of his milk delivery. You try to stand up, but you slip on the milk and eat shit, just as Equius bursts through the door. They both tower over where you lay, flopping in effectively in a burgeoning puddle of froth. God, is everyone in this house just made of muscle? You've had enough of this regular strength escape attempt shit. Bruised, humiliated, and covered in dairy, you zap on out of there. Humiliated that? Okay. What are you wearing, first of all? What happened to our blue hoodie? Wait, who gave us that? Also, why does the milk look like that? There's so much concerning stuff going on here. Okay, let's be brave. <laughs> oh no, oh man. You know the Gansey seal of approval is maybe not the most credible, but this guy might be an okay dude. And it would definitely be your fault if he was hurt in there. You should at least check on him. Explain or something? You can't zap away if it comes down to it. If you remember to zap. You do the polite thing this time and knock. He opens the door fast like he was just on the other side of it. You both jump. He collects himself and glares at you. Arms crossed against his heaving chest. Rivets of blood and sweat run together and pull in the divot above his weird alien clavicle. And a low menacing sound rumbles through him. You can feel it in your teeth. Holy shit, he's terrifying. Explain yourself immediately. You think you might shit your pants on the spot, but he gives you a quick up and down and rearranges his expression into a sort of forced smile. It doesn't really feel like any more welcoming, what with the blood dripping down his chin, but the fact that he's trying is maybe a good sign. You hold in your fear shit just in case <laughs> for later. Or perhaps come in and take a seat. He steps aside to beckon you through the door, then sort of freezes. Unless you should be the one instructing me, in which case it would behoove you to make that promptly apparent. I cannot work out how exactly to address you when you don't wear a cast symbol, and you look like that, which I am either very sorry for, or quite, um, I don't remember what the percentage stuff is, quite something about depending on where the truth lies. Either way, I am beginning to perspire about it. So, out with it right now. Man, he's really struggling. The anger you felt radiating off him before is still there, but that doesn't seem to be all of what's driving him. It's like there are two competing forces inside him. One that wants to yell at you, and one that wants to get yelled at by you. You might conceptualize th these forces as fierce animals, 
worrying and a glorious and unwavering balance. Horses, perhaps. Anyway, you'll workshop that metaphor later. You tell me you know you look weird, but you promise you're cool. You know a friend of his. At the mention of Gamzee, the corner of his lip curls up into something complicated. So you change course really fast, real fast, just in case. And Carcat. Does he know Carcat? What a guy. He eyes you warily, or you think he probably does? With his eyes hidden behind his shades, you can't be sure, but he's being very still. Sweat and blood are still just fucking running down his face, and he's not even acknowledging it. You laugh nervously. You both continue to stand there, waiting for the other to make a move. It would be super helpful if someone was assertive around here. Luckily, some kind of cow centaur man, his looses, you assume, breaks the awkward doorway stalemate by silently trotting up and handing Equius a desperately needed towel. He then offers you both some frosty glasses of milk. Something deep inside you feels a swell of warm recognition for the ritualistic moment of a friend's parent bringing you snacks. So you down that thick shit in one go. Oh, uh, you're are you remembering a uh, goat dad? The Lucis's mustache flutters in appreciation, and after a nod between him and Equius, he leaves as quietly as he came. I see you're an aficionado of the sweetest of nectars. The this speaks to the likelihood of your nobility, which is reassuring. I may be able to overlook the circumstances of our meeting then. If you can provide strong evidence, of course. Tell me, are you also a hoof beast art enthusiast? I can tell you I'm not. He beckons you inside the room, and as you follow, you tell him you're not really sure what that means, but probably you're a fan of a lot of... Oh. Uh, wow, well, okay, so that's what that means. Cool, yeah, you know, whatever. You feel like you learn once that anything can be art if it feels right, so art can definitely be the... Uh... Will muscle horsemen on the walls of this here living space. Equius rumbles in agreement and gestures toward a chair. It's one of those cool red and black gamer themed chairs with embedded speakers. There's a lot of that kind of decorating motif in here, which is a little at odds with the high ceilings and engraved doorways and general blue blood old money architecture. Oh, yeah, huh. And there are broken bows and robot parts all over the goddamn fucking place. Not in neat little stacks or connected to other robot parts to create whole robots, just an absolute wasteland of obliterated robo corpses, like they all were torn limb from limb and just scoot and then just scooted off toward the wall. A fair few of them are spattered in blood too. Dried, it looks almost black, but the fresh stuff on the fists of the one in pieces at your feet is bright indigo. On the other hand, it is absolutely a relief to see that it's all metal and not flesh body parts scattering the floor. But also it's still, you know, not, not fucked up looking. Also, why do they have blood on them? Your smile probably has too many teeth in it to seem normal. But Equius returns it in kind and leans, what he probably thinks is casually, against the edge of his desk. It creaks under his weight. Jesus, he could just end you in a half second, couldn't he? You claim we have mutual acquaintances. Why are you adding cow stuff in here now? So demonstrate it. He nods toward the screen of his desktop, where he just, where he has Trollian open. Oh, fuck. Okay. You guess you can just click on someone and ask them to prove it? Yeah, what if they decide to screw me over? He seems to know both Karkat and Gamzee. And between the two, you know who's most likely to be online and ready to pester and to be pestered at all times? So you click his screen name and start typing. What? Oh, Karkat? Centaur's Tesco CT began trolling Carcino Genesis CG. Hey, Karkat! I hope you're having a good day. I just had a quick favor to ask you. You should have said who, are, who you are first. He thinks the Equius is like, you know, I aming him. Wait, what? Oh, also, I miss you. What the fuck? What happened to you? Where's your horrifying quirk? How am I supposed- How am I supposed to saddle up for some truly nauseating conversation? If I don't have a non- not veil at all bulge reference greeting me at the beginning of every one of your excruciating messages? Are you sick? Like in a new way? Oh, right, Jesus. You're logged in as Equius. Your fool ass just started typing like you had your own account for some reason. You blame it on the nerves and get to clarifying. Oh, haha, sorry. This is your new friend. After I dropped you off yesterday, I wandered around for a while and now I'm hanging out with Equius. I'm using his computer. Oh. My pusher almost fucking gave up on the spot. 
I don't think he trusts me. Can you vouch for me? Hold on, let me just bask in the concept of the two of you hanging out. This is a mental masterpiece. A tabloid of awkward fucking splendor. I legitimately do not even know what sort of short-circuiting must be happening in his brain to try and make sense of you. Please don't tell me a single fucking thing about it later. So tell you or don't tell you? you gotta be straightforward with me, dude. Okay, whew, I'm done now. Is he watching? Aqueous leans over your shoulder and tucks his hair behind his ear so it doesn't get in the way of his typing. It's a bow and arrow. Any resemblance otherwise is only a pleasant coincidence. And yes, I am watching. Okay, whatever. Listen up, you milk log chum squelcher. This little guy right there, the one you're probably dripping sweat all over, that's one of the realest friends you will ever hope to make. Sure, they'll send your life careening horrendously, of course, but it will absolutely be worth it for the level of dedication they bring to the table. Wow, thanks for backing me up, Carcat. Don't even bother with the blood color horseshit with this one, since they're the only one of their species. Just roll with it for once in your wretched life. Don't fuck this one up, Zahawk. They're an abomination, and they wouldn't know what a boundary was if it took up residence in their grease chute. But you two have those things in common. So in this case, that's a good thing. Equius inhales sharply, and you wonder what Carcat meant by that. About Equius, you mean? Sure, you're an inexplicable being, neither Earthling nor Alternian, but with weird itchy memories about having lived on both planets. But he doesn't seem out of the normal range of fucked up, considering troll standards. In fact, how about this? That is sufficient, goodbye. He minimizes the window and steps back, somehow sweatier than he was before. He taps the towel gingerly to his forehead. So, we have now been properly introduced. Okay then, you definitely thought he was going to be more thorough than that. He does seem a little shaken up, so maybe you should just be thankful the conversation got cut short before he could really dig too deep into your lore and get, sh and get judgmental about it. Well, I also don't think you have much lore, so... I... I do not know the standard method of communication with your species. You will take the lead here, and it will surely become clear how I should proceed. Yes, that sounds extremely feasible. You will now begin the friendship process. I command it, okay? Oh, sure, you got this. Uh, how, how exactly do you got this? Show off your cool powers so we're both freaks. <laughs> oh dear. God, I guess I'll show off my cool powers first. Great, you can do that. Making friendship happen is like the one skill you actually have. From what you recall, you have a 100% success rate added too, so this buddy report is safe in your hands. Excellent. Whew, you really were sure he'd be down for this. Things decay. I don't like that. What? What? Why is there- Are there boss fights in this game? Oh no. 